Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you really love the reaction videos to Dr. Zucker Nike. Today we're gonna watch Dr. Zucker Nike again with his video, The Differences Between Shia and Sunni Sects in Islam. This is a video that a subscriber has sent to me personally. I am very, very intrigued to find out about this because I am doing my own research as well on Shiism, on Sunnism, even on Sufism. I'm very, very curious to find out about the truth true cause for the separations. People say it's only political, but then if you look into the sex, there are different religious practices, different perceptions of certain characters within Islamic history as well. So this is definitely something that I really have to learn about, and I hope that this video will shed some light on it. Let's have a look. As the non-Muslim is, that if all the Muslims, they believe in the same Allah, they follow the same Quran, they believe in the same prophet then why are Muslims divided into sects the reply to this question is given in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Imran chapter number 3 verse number 103 where Allah says Wa bihabli lai wa la hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided there's double emphasis hold to the rope of Allah strongly the second emphasis and be not divided the rope of Allah, it's the glorious Quran. Allah says, hold to the rope of Allah, that's the glorious Quran, and be not divided. Allah when I hear this, I can understand the so-called Quranists as well. Those people simply believe in the Quran and they don't really pay much attention to the Hadith. It says, Atiyu Allah, Atiyu Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. In Surah Nisa chapter 459. So, we have to strongly hold to Allah and the sayings of the Prophet and be not divided. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse 159, that if anyone breaks their religions and divides the religion of Islam into sects, O Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after his affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that if anyone breaks his religion into sects and divides his religion, O Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after his affairs on the day of judgment. But when we ask the Muslim, normally, what are you? So some say, I'm a Sunni. Some say, I'm a Shia. Some say, Hanafi. Some say, Shafi. Some say, Hamali. Some say, Malki. Some say, Deobandi. Some say, Barevli. Some say, Eliadis. Some say, Salafi. Some say, jamaat e islami Some say, Tabligi. What was the beloved Prophet? What was he? Was he Hanafi? Was he Shafi? Was he humbly? What was he? What was he? He was a Muslim. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 52, Isa alayhi salam was a Muslim. Allah says in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse 67, that Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was not a Jew or a Christian, he was a Muslim. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat. And that's exactly the impression that I got when I was reading the Quran. Essentially Muslim, somebody that believes, a believer, somebody that submitted his will to God, is simply that. You are not following a sect. You cannot by default follow then a sect, but you simply submit yourself to God. You are a believer. You are among the believers. Chapter 41, verse number 33. Woman Hassan Nukala Mimman Dailahi. Wamil Sali Hong. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of their Lord, works righteousness, and sees that I am a Muslim? And sees that I am a Muslim. And the master key for Dawah, which I've mentioned in several verses of the Quran, in several of my lectures, the master key of Dawah, and the most important verse according to me in the Quran of Sulaiman Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, is Pul Yahil Kitab. Say, O people of the book. Come to common terms as in us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. 
that we worship none but Allah. Well, I'm not sure he say, you know, that we associate the partners with him. Well, I yet the then Arbabin Minunilla, that we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Find the Allah. If then they turn back, Fakul Shadu, say we bear witness, we are not Muslim, that we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah. I am a Muslim, we are Muslim. No less than 22 places in the Quran, Allah says, Call yourself a Muslim. Call yourself a Muslim. Ibrahim al -Salam, exactly, man. in Surah Hajj, chapter 22. When he did dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's exactly how I understood it, man. When I was reading the Quran, I was letting go of my biases. At first, as I said, I want to find the devil within the Quran. But that faded very, very quickly because I saw that the Quran rejects the devil pretty much on every page. So when that bias was gone, I was looking at the Quran, reading it as objectively as I can. I stopped thinking about the Muslims that I knew. I stopped thinking about the people that I've met and the preconceived notions that I had about Islam. I was simply reading the text. And whilst reading the text, yet again, I felt personally addressed. And the text spoke to me and was clarifying that there are two kinds of people. Either you're a believer or a non-believer, i.e. Muslim. So that make my children Muslims. And I really have to try here. I pronounce it like an American. I say Muslim. Of course, I have to say Muslim. In Macedonia, we All say Muslim. I am Mas. All these great scholars of Islam, the four Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Abid bin Hanbal, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, may Allah have mercy on them all. May Allah be pleased with them all. I love them. I respect them all. All these are great scholars of Islam. All of them. When you ask them, if you ask Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased with him. Who are you? What reply will he give? What will he say? I'm a Muslim. We love these scholars. We respect these scholars. All the scholars said that if you find any of my fatwa, which goes against Allah and his Rasul, you throw my fatwa on the wall. We love these scholars. We respect them. But all of them came to get us closer to Islam to make us a practicing Muslim, not divide our religion. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 59, Ya illizina amanu, O you believe, Atiullah wa atiur Rasul, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And those who have been charged with authority, wa ulil amri minkum, who have been charged with authority amongst you, so people say, believe in Allah, believe in the message, messenger, and believe in the scholars. But they're putting a full stop where there's no full stop. The verse does not end there. The verse continues. Obey Allah and obey the messengers and those who have been charged with authority, the ulama, the scholars. But if they differ, go back to Allah and His Rasul. If they differ, if any scholar... If you find all the scholars say the same thing, you don't have to do research. All say pray five times, no problem. All say fast, no problem. But if two scholars differ, you go back to Allah and His Rasul. Where is the question of dividing the religion? That's our beloved Prophet Muhammad said. It's a Sahih Hadith of Sunan Abu Dawud, Hadith number. 4579, our beloved prophet said. And how he can remember those things off the top of his head. Unbelievable. There will be 73 sects in Islam. But mind you, so people say, Prophet has prophesied. The prophet said there will be. The prophet didn't say make. The prophet said there will be 73 sects. Prophet did not say you should make sects in Islam. Allah clearly mentioned in Surah Anam chapter 6, verse 159, do not make sects in the religion of Islam. The Prophet predicted there will be 73 sects. He didn't say you should make. There's another hadith, a say hadith in Tirmidhi, hadith number 171. A beloved Prophet Muhammad said that there will be 73 sects in Islam, out of which all will go to hell except one. The Sahabas asked, which one? He said, those that follow me and my companions, those that follow Quran and the authentic hadith. So if you stick to the Quran, and the Sahih Hadith, you are on the straight path. So in Islam, 
There is no division. I really have to look into this more and more. And as I said, I'm preparing questions myself here for Sheikh Uthman. I personally really wonder about those hadiths because during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, there were no hadiths as far as I know. And moreover, correct me if I'm wrong, I even heard that Prophet Muhammad said that he doesn't even want hadiths to be written down. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And no sex in Islam. Islam is only one. The Quran is one. Our beloved Prophet is one. You have to follow the Quran and the authentic sayings of Prophet Muhammad. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Very interesting stuff, and it confirms what I believed or what I felt rather whilst reading the Quran. As I said, I personally simply got the impression that this is a clarifying book that shows us who the believers are and who the non believers are. It did not talk about sects or different practices, quite the opposite. It clarified what was right, what was wrong, who was a believer, and who was not. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. I'm going to rest a little bit. I'm still recovering. Please pray for me so I can return to make more videos. All right, guys, but this is it for today. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support me via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.